A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Women's European Outlook. A bit of a mismatch in terms of uh, things to look at today. Looking firstly at the Global Sea Service Temperature Anomaly Profile. Um, a couple of interesting factors to speak about. Still cold waters extending from Alaska down the west coast of Canada. We've uh, got still very warm waters over the north central Pacific. Uh, we have, of course, the North Atlantic uh, warm. But uh, notice here, we're starting to see chillier waters developing here that is a direct consequence of the strong west to east zonal jet stream uh, causing upwelling of waters here so the continued storminess uh, crossing the atlantic is forcing colder water at lower uh, depths within the ocean to upwell to the surface allowing the north atlantic to cool somewhat which is quite interesting but again nothing particularly surprising given the pattern the la nina is still there a slight weakening um, over the last week to 10 days. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see as we push towards the spring and summer uh, how much weakening we get. Do we revert to a, a, an El Nino? Do we um, have an, a neutral or even the return of La Nina towards the um, you know summer and into the autumn season? Uh, that's the big question um, as we go forward because the CFSV2 indicating uh, the continuation of La Nina conditions for a third straight year. Uh, but that is, of course, very questionable. Uh, very warm waters surrounding Indonesia here, and we've got a strong Madden Julian oscillation at the moment. Um, and you, can, you know, um, that strong Madden Julian oscillation extending from the eastern Indian Ocean through the continental maritime region and into, into the West Pacific has been the driving force given. Uh, how warm these waters are surrounding this part of the world here. Cooling over the western Indian Ocean, which is quite interesting. Also seeing cooling over the um, far east Atlantic here, hugging up against the African coastline. Uh, but, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where we go. Um, but notice here that if you look just primarily at the tropical belt here, and you've got a fair amount of cool waters here, um, you know, from the Atlantic through the Western Indian Ocean. Yeah, we've got warmth around Indonesia, but we've got a big extension of cool here over these, from really extending from the Central uh, Pacific all the way to the South American coast. And this is a pretty good correlation when you look at the, um, the uh, you know, the lower troposphere here for January the noteworthy average to below average temperatures within the lower troposphere here. I think, you know, there's a very strong relationship here of La Nina cooling uh, that is allowing the tropics to cool down quite interestingly. And of course, with cooler waters, there is less water vapor released into the atmosphere. And if you look at the current sea surface temperature profile here, You've got very warm waters over the central North Pacific, very warm waters over the North Atlantic. If you look at the chart, you can see here where the water, the atmosphere is warmest over the very areas where the ocean is very warm, North Pacific, North Atlantic, and of course we've got the warmth over the northern portion of Asia as well. And there is a, a good correlation here to global temperature here. The atmosphere is coming down in terms of heat, We've got this big peak um, after the Super El Nino, of course. Then the drop-off with the La Nina. We've had a little bit of an increase, of course, when the Enzo went neutral during last summer. And then, of course, we've had the return of La Nina. We're seeing that consequential cool-down once again. And it's going to be interesting to see in the next couple of months the lower tropospheric temperature, the global temperature, and see if we get a significant response in terms of cooling the global temperature, both in the ocean, the lower atmosphere. Uh, it's going to be worth keeping an eye on, I think, as we go forward here. But there is a good correlation here between the La Nina and the cooling the tropical belt and the uh, tropical lower troposphere as well. So it's all very interesting indeed. As we go forward here, uh, looking at the um, CFSV2, I told you it was a mishmash today. I'm kind of bouncing back and forward. But uh, we looked at the 
uh, the GFS Ensemble, of course, in the, the previous video. Um, very much a, a positive North Atlantic Oscillation dominated pattern. Strong troughiness uh, near Iceland. Strong ridge of high pressure over the Azores. We've got a, a pretty much a flat west east zonal flow driving very warm um, Atlantic air into the continent here. And like I said, we could be approaching one of the warmest Februarys on record. Not necessarily the warmest. 2019 was the warmest, but we certainly could be up there when all is said and done, given how warm the continent is thus far versus the forecast through the remainder of the month here and this is week two of course week three uh, that ridge of high pressure starting to kind of poke its nose northwards if you notice here over the uk and bang look at that here for the period between the 5th of march and the 12th of march we have a blowtorch over the continent and that would certainly indicate a very very warm march uh, that's for sure here but i've got a couple of ideas a couple of uh, thoughts in terms of the latter February period in the March. I had uh, a message um, earlier today um, from a chap in Inverness asking uh, whether there'll be a sudden stratospheric warming uh, before all is said and done. And uh, I did actually reply by saying that it is very possible that we could still see a sudden stratospheric warming. Yeah, I know I'm probably sounding like I'm kind of beating the drum and I'm, I'm being uh, relentless with this. The thing is, folks, that the stratosphere should naturally start to kind of weaken and should start to warm at this time of the year. And sometimes when you've got these very warm winters, you almost start to have a bit of a breakdown in the, in the polar vortex, uh, both within the stratosphere and the troposphere. Temperatures 20, 30 degrees uh, above normal. It was um, Gavin Partridge that said in his video yesterday, about how the, the tropospheric polar vortex is about 20, 30 degrees colder than normal at this time of the year. Uh, that's going to break down at some point. And, you know, my fear is that it breaks down at the end of February and then we'll have a crummy, cold, damp March, uh, you know, maybe late March into to April here. Or we could have a March of 2012 again where we've seen record breaking warmth. Very difficult to pinpoint down. But uh, you can see here where, where the CFS is, V2 is going with the overall idea. And if you look at the 2 meter temperature anomaly chart here, if I can manage to pull it up because I've zoomed in too much here, uh, you can see here the temperatures. Um, and it's, it's all going one way, folks. It's all going one way indeed. And that's why I've got a fear that we could be talking about a very, very warm month of february and even it could even be Mar um, march as well here this is week one temperatures very warm across the board not even the north of scotland is seeing cooler than normal week two interestingly enough it has a uh, below normal temperatures across the north of scotland here and um week three we've just got the continuation of warmth and as we go forward uh, wow what a warm march that certainly would be it certainly looks as if that could be another march of 2012 if the C CFS V2 is anything to go by. Look, uh, speaking about the polar vortex here, this is a uh, loop, the latest GFS uh, 10 HPA temperatures. Let's play through the loop. And you do see, and this has been happening uh, pretty much all winter, where we see a strong polar vortex. However, we do see the warmth. There is a little bit of a kind of push and pull of the vortex. As I play through the loop during the middle and second half of February, we've got another resurgence of warmth over Siberia. That tries to push the polar vortex towards North America, if you notice here, which is quite interesting. It kind of weakens it. It kind of becomes a little bit uh, stretched out. Never really it warms fully. The ECMWF, by the way, is indicating the sun's transferring warming, uh, I think, you know, way out to the early portion of March. And that's my fear. That's my fear that it happens and we have a very cold, wet, disappointing spring overall because there is a tendency for warm winters to be followed by quite cold springs. And I think um, something has got to give uh, with the atmosphere. Finally, temperatures yesterday morning, fairly chilly, nothing extreme in terms of lows minus sixes minus even a couple of minus sevens here minus 7.8 in uh, northumberland here uh, this was yesterday morning 
And if you go back to exactly one year previous, we had the um, temperatures here. If I can try and get, I'm struggling to do to, to it. There we go. You have to get there sometime. Look at the temperatures here for a year previous to that. And we are talking about, is it going to show me it? Look at this. Minus 19.7 at Altahara. So basically minus 8.1 Celsius at Braemar yesterday. The same morning a year previous, the temperature was minus 23 Celsius, of course. UK's coldest temperature since December 95. And the coldest February temperature since 1956. I was up in Cambrace. I experienced the minus 21 coldest temperature I had ever experienced in the UK. And um, it is a pretty much a far cry to what we've got now. These are the current temperatures, by the way. We're back in the milder once again after the cold of the last few days. Nine up in ten, uh, ten in a boin here. We've got um, a little bit of cool over the Midlands, as you can see here. But uh, generally speaking, mild, mild, mild is the story as we go forward. So that's it for today. Hope you have a great day and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll try and be back again with a video tomorrow. If not, I'll be back again on Monday looking at the stormy week ahead. Bye for now.